Okay, to celebrate Stéphane Sixtus' birthday. So thank you, Joanne, and thank you, uh, Gabriel, for making this uh, possible. My, my recollections of Stéphane uh, go back to September 1990, where we actually um, met in a classroom at uh, Lycée Louis Grand. Um, so it was uh, the beginning of a friendship which has lasted for more than 40 years, and I uh, treasure it. Um, now I'm, I'm sorry, Stefano. 80, did I say? What did I say? 90, okay, so yeah, yeah. 1980, absolutely, absolutely. It's good that you can correct me. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm sorry, Stefan, but I, I, have to, I have to tell a um, painful secret. Uh, we, <laughs> we were not, the, you and I were not the best in mathematics in that classroom. <laughs> by far, by far. <laughs> no, I didn't say by far. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, so there was an uh, amazing guy called uh, Pierre Colmez. So if, if some of you have not heard of Pierre Colmez, you can uh, Google his name and you'll, uh, you'll see that he's uh, one of the most famous specialists of the long grants program. So that's very, very pure mathematics. And uh, I don't understand anything about it. I, I don't know about you. <laughs> OK. Um, so actually, Pierre Colmes for us disappeared very quickly because um, he went uh, to, at the end of the year, he went to Ecole Normale Supérieure, of course. Uh, well, we, <laughs> Stéphane and I went to Ecole Polytechnique. Uh, actually, uh, Eric Moulin mentioned that uh, that time yesterday, um, and uh, so he showed this, uh, this picture. Stefan knows where, where it comes from, actually. Um, and he made some kind of uh, nasty remarks about the evolution of Stefan's hair. And uh, so I, I think that Stefan ne needs a little revenge, and I will show you uh, Eric Moulin's hair at that time. <laughs> And uh, you see that the, the gradient is much more dramatic in the, in the case of Eric. Okay, so uh, Eric also showed the, the picture of Yves Meyer. So you can also compare the evolution of the hair and bird between uh, when uh, Yves Meyer was teaching us mathematics. Uh, he was teaching the analysis course in uh, Ecole Polytechnique. And this was taken during the... <coughs> Um, Abel, um, uh, Abel Price. Um, so actually, uh, mentioning Yves Meyer, uh, is, is, is not, it was not just a coincidence that Yves uh, was, uh, was our professor, because um, at, the, uh, at the end of uh, our scholarship at, at Ecole Polytechnique, I, was, uh, I went to see him to, to take a little uh, uh, research project, and he, he, he proposed to me uh, a title that I liked very much, which was called uh, Beyond Pseudo-Differential Operators. So I, I had no idea of what pseudo-differential operators were, so I'm going directly beyond <laughs> was kind of fascinating for me. <laughs> and, um, okay. So I, I did what I could <laughs> on this topic. Um, and actually did not um, take it bad because when uh, two years later I, ca I came back to Eve and I asked him if uh, that I, I thought I would like to do a PhD in mathematics and uh, would you have a nice topic to propose me? He told me, well, I've completely, you are lucky because I've completely changed topic and now I'm working with a theoretical physicist and an uh, engineer in oil detection on a new, new subject called uh, wavelets. And um, he also told me that he had, he had no topic to propose because the topic was, the, the subject was just starting, but uh, nonetheless, I could just uh, jump in and he would uh, certainly, um, I mean, interesting problems would certainly pop up quickly, which was uh, a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why I, uh, I started Wavelet at that time. And um, so that's, that's also, how Stefan heard about wavelets. Actually, it was not directly from me. It was from uh, another friend who had also been with us at Lycée Louis Grand and at uh, Ecole Polytechnique. And I also found a photograph of this guy, Michel Cohen de Laran, and he who was also doing a PhD in maths. And he told Stefan about wavelets. And uh, so you heard yesterday Eve, uh, Eve's words about the, 
the, the rest of the story and uh, how in a, in a few months actually Stéphane transformed uh, what was before an, uh, I would say an elegant mathematical theory into an incredibly powerful new area of science which uh, stood between mathematics, computer science, uh, signal and image processing. Um, so I, would, I will give a talk which could almost have been uh, uh, on, on work that could have been almost have been done at that time. So that's a little bit the, the bias which has already been noticed by, uh, for instance, Dave, that uh, mathematicians go much more slowly and uh, come back to old problems. Um, and which is uh, some very, very basic questions concerning uh, wavelet expansions. Uh, so if I want to, to turn it, uh, not from a purely m mathematical point of view, but more um, uh, maybe appealing to us, it, you can relate it to, uh, to trying to understand how robust wavelet techniques and wavelet expansions are. And uh, for that, I thought I would, I would com compare what, what you do with wavelets with what you do with uh, Fourier series. So actually, it's an... Uh, uh, it's a very old topic because it actually goes back to uh, uh, to our thesis, which was raised, which was posed um, also as a, a, a PhD problem uh, by uh, by Hilbert at a time when um, when Dubois Raymond had shown that that Fourier series of a periodic function can uh, can diverge at certain points. So the mathematical community was kind of uh, uh, was very surprised by, by, by this because Fourier series, you're uh, analyzing your, your, your function on a very smooth system. So if you have some, some smoothness, you would expect to recover a, a, as much regularity property of the expansion as, you, uh, as, as possible. And so Hilbert, Hilbert wondered if, this, this problem, if it was really a problem with Fourier series or if it was some kind of intrinsic problem that would show up in any, um, in any other expansion. And uh, actually R constructed the, the, the first weighted basis to, to solve exactly this problem. So this is the first element of the R system, but I guess that uh, we can assume that everybody in the room knows about the, about the R basis. And what R proved is actually that if you uh, uh, that this, this is a, that the problem raised by, uh, by Hilbert is a problem which is uh, intrinsic to, to Fourier series and not to, to, a general, uh, to a general expansion. Uh, and that is if you take a continuous function, if you expand it on the R basis, you will have uniform convergence of the, of the partial sum. So in particular, so you, don't, you, you won't have this, uh, this divergence problem that, that can show up in the case of uh, Fourier series. And uh, actually, this can be uh, much improved, and you, you can show convergence in many, many function spaces. And I, I just mentioned one of the many theorems that have been proved, which is a, a theorem I like by Gérard Bourdeau, uh, which says that basically the R basis does the best that you can expect. So if as soon as the, uh, of course, the R basis is not smooth, so the, the R wavelet does not, does not belong to spaces of smooth function, but as soon as the, wave, as the wavelet belongs to a function space, basically you have uh, your, the wavelet, the, the R system is uh, what, I, what we call an unconditional basis of this, of this function space. And the, uh, so we'll come back to the notion of unconditional basis a little bit later. And, and the condition in, in red at the, at the bottom just, just says that expresses the fact that the, R wa that the R wavelet belongs to the function space. Okay, so, so the message is that wavelets, and in particular uh, R, R basis, do as best as possible in, in contradistinction with, uh, with Fourier, Fourier system. And what is very nice and very important is that you have explicit characterization of the fact that a function belongs to the function space by, by conditions on the, on the moduli of the, of the wavelet coefficients. Um, okay, so now I'll, I'll, we'll consider classical orthonormal basis, and as I said, as they existed at the end of the, end of the 80s. <coughs> 
So I will go quickly on that because I also assume that you've all read the papers, the first papers of Stefano, and you know everything about autonomous wavelet bases. Um, and uh, so let me uh, explain a little bit what are unconditional bases. So you have this, this notion that, as I said, wavelets do as best as possible. And uh, unconditional bases, you have two conditions. You have the natural condition of, of convergence of partial sum, which is a condition um, expressed by the fact that you have a Schauder basis. So it means that any function can be represented in a unique way as a sum, as a linear combination of the elements of the basis. And you have convergence, so either in, in the space or if the space is not separable, uh, like for an C alpha spaces, this kind of spaces, then you, you replace strong convergence by a weak star convergence. So this is no, uh, no big deal. And unconditional basis means that uh, convergence takes place if you, if you perform any permutation of the element of the series. And this is equivalent to the fact that if you multiply coefficients by plus or minus one, then you still have, have convergence in the, in the space. Okay, so this means, again, if, if, if you still have convergence, if you multiply by, by plus or minus one, it means that belonging to the space is characterized by a condition on the modulus of the, uh, of the coefficient, which was typically the case that I was showing in the, um, a little bit earlier with the R basis and, and, and Bourdeau's uh, characterizations. Okay, and, and you have actually, you can, you can bound norms by um, this way. Okay, so this is an important, uh, this is an important, very important property. And the fact that uh, it works simultaneously for, I would say, most, most classical function spaces. So you, so you have to exclude a few fun pathological function spaces. Uh, let me try to put that again. Like, uh, like L1 or uh, spaces like, uh, or L infinity, this kind of spaces. Uh, plays, plays a very important role in statistics, and in, in particular, they, they sh sh use this, this, this property um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an amazing way to, to, to show Im implications uh, in, uh, in statistics. Okay, so uh, what I was mentioning for the R basis actually works for, uh, uh, for wavelet basis, and you, you don't have the limitations of, of the regularity of the R system. So if you use a smooth wavelet basis, you will have, uh, wavelets will be unconditional basis of uh, most, most, I would say, function spaces. And it is not the case for the trigonometric system. So this, this was also uh, known for a long time, but I, I, I'll just mention a, a, a result I like very much from uh, Deleuve, Kahn, and Kasselson, which shows that in a very uh, striking way. And uh, the result is that if you, if you start with, um, uh, with any L2, uh, L2 function, and you write its, uh, its Fourier expansion, then just by increasing the size of the Fourier coefficient, you can, uh, you can get a continuous function. So this, this is extremely counterintuitive. You have this, um, I would say, uh, loose ID which is backed by, by, by many results that the, on which we, we, we teach our students that if, if, you, if, the, if the Fourier coefficients decay faster and faster, then the function is smoother and smoother. But you don't have characterizations. And actually, there is some room for uh, actually ma making this phenomenon happen. You, you, you just enlarge the, the, the Fourier coefficients, and, you, and you, get, you, you get something which is smoother. Uh, so you can, you can see this as a kind of nice theorem, but it is dramatic if you look it the other way around. I mean, it means also that if you start with a continuous function, it, it may happen that if you shrink a little the, the coefficients, you will get something extremely bad. You can get something as bad as an arbitrarily L2 function. So it means that uh, as soon as you think about uh, shrinkage on, um, uh, on Fourier coefficients, you may, uh, you may come up on, on, on big problems. Okay, so 
so you can see this as a kind of nu numerical instability of the trigonometric system. I mean, by just reducing a little bit the, 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 the coefficient, you get something very bad. Um, okay, so that's so that's that's a kind of, of conclusion that maybe standard statistical methods like shrinkage, which use shrinkage, could 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 fail if you use uh, if you work on the trigonometric system. Um, okay, so let me uh, come back a little bit to, to functional analysis. Um, for for some bases, it's kind of uh, hard to say that. Uh, if, if you take any choice on plus and minus one, you will have a convergence in the cor corresponding space. And so there was a, a nice condition that was introduced, <coughs> which is called a, a RUC system, uh, where you won't ask for convergence for any plus and minus one, but for almost every plus and minus one. So it, in the random setting of saying, OK, I take randomly plus and minus one with probability one half, one half in an independent way. OK. So the, this is the first attempt to, uh, to introduce some ideas of a random series to, to understand functional analysis properties. And actually, there is a theorem, so I, I won't explain uh, the um, uh, the second term of the equivalence, but which tells you that actually in many situations you 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 don't have to use uh, to use this condition, and the the, the technical uh, Banner space condition is that x does not contain uh, contain ln infinity uniformly. So that basically means that you you are not in spaces like. Uh, L infinity or C alpha or, for instance, Bezos spaces where one of the indices is uh, infinity. Okay, that, that roughly means that. So for most function spaces, you don't need to have uh, recourse to, to, to that. And uh, randomizing or just taking all possibilities of plus or minus one won't, won't make any, any change. Uh, okay. So that means that for most spaces, if you, for, for instance, if you, um, uh, if you randomize coefficients using plus or minus one, or um, if you do it by other, uh, for instance, uh, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian random variables, you won't, you, 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 you won't see a difference, okay? And actually, so that means that Again, in most, in most function spaces, if you like LP, for instance, LP space, if you start with a, uh, with a wavelet expansion, because LP can be characterized by conditions on the moduli of the wavelet coefficients, if you randomize the coefficients by putting Gaussians in coefficients in front of the, of the functions, you still remain in the, in the same function space. Okay? Uh, Okay, so we were wondering uh, what, what uh, these, these ideas of randomization, uh, so I, yeah, I, it was written, but I, I didn't say it, it's a joint work with, uh, when I say we, it's joint work with uh, Céline Esser and uh, Beatrice Vedel. Uh, what, it, uh, what it yells in, in some, uh, on some simple examples. Uh, so we started with a very s classical example of the SOTUS function, and um, so what, what what happens if you make a Fourier expansion of this, uh, of this series, so the Fourier expansion is written here, and you randomize the coefficients, and you make a wavelet expansion and you randomize uh, the coefficients. Okay, so if you do the, the this is very simple uh, numerical, but you see that you get something very different. Here you get something that looks like a, a stochastic process, which, uh, which is everywhere, which looks everywhere the same, and here it's, very different. You have a smooth, uh, a smooth function, and it looks like you have some kind of divergence at, at the points of discontinuity. Okay, so very different behavior, and we wanted to understand a little bit, for instance, actually, is there really divergence at these uh, points of discontinuity? Is the function really smooth outside, and, and so on, to understand a little bit what's happening? But it, uh, at least it shows that you have very different behaviors if, if, if you uh, try to compare with the same function, starting with the same function, uh, uh, a Fourier series randomization and, uh, and the wavelet randomization. 
Okay, so as regards for your series, I mean, there have been uh, huge amounts of, uh, of results concerning randomization of Fourier series. So I won't, I won't go too much into that. I, I'll just quote, uh, uh, well, one first, one striking result of Marcus and Pizier, who are really the, the pioneers of this, uh, uh, of this study, and uh, which states that if you, with a Fourier series, with the same coefficients a n, if you randomize um, using your uh, independent random error random variable, so again plus one or minus one independent with probability one half one half, and Gaussian, then if you consider the space of continuous function, you, you, you do not see any difference. Okay, either both of them are continuous or both of them are uh, unbounded. And in particular, you cannot have the intermediate case of uh, bounded but, uh, but discontinuous. Okay, so uh, let me show you, for instance, a, a first theorem which is in, in really in strong contradistinction with uh, this theorem of, of Marcus and Pizier. If you, um, if, if you randomize using, for instance, Gaussians, I mean, you, you just need the, the random variable to be unbounded, but uh, Gaussian is a, is a perfect choice. Then you, you can construct wavelet series which are uniformly convergent. So in particular, the function is continuous. And such that if you randomize with, uh, with Gaussians, then it's not only it's, it's not continuous, but it's 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 nowhere locally uh, nowhere locally bounded. So it, it looks like the, the series is is, is diverging. Uh, well, not everywhere, but uh, on it uh, it's diverging on a dense set. Okay, so that shows a very different behavior with uh, with Fourier series, and it it looks like actually it. Uh, it's, it's a result which goes in, uh, in the opposite direction as the previous results I, wa I was mentioning. Okay? Uh, I was saying that be because wavelets are unconditional, uh, have this um, uh, have characterizations on, uh, uh, by typi typically L L LP conditions for uh, little LP conditions uh, for, for Bezos spaces, you, you don't see the difference between uh, Radomarer and Gaussian, whereas for Fourier series you see a big difference, and that, that was a Deleuve, Kahn, and Katznelson result. And here it goes just in the opposite way. You have a worse, a, a worse behavior using uh, using wavelet than than using uh, Fourier series. Um, okay, and uh, actually you can. Uh, uh, what time did I start? Seven minutes. Okay, okay, maybe I can uh, talk a little bit. Th this is not, well, I just want to, to mention that this is not v very particular and kind of uh, uh, ad hoc mathematical construction to construct such function, and you have generi genericity results for, for that. So the, the, I would say the, the good setting of genericity for such, uh, for such results is supplied by, by what we call prevalence. So here I have a uh, well, uh, a slide on prevalence. Basically, prevalence, uh, usually in, in mathematics, the, um, uh, the notion of genericity is bare genericity, which is not very satisfactory because you bare almost everywhere can be on a s small set in some sense. And prevalence is, is more satisfactory because it extends to, uh, to infinite dimensional spaces, the notion of uh, Lebesgue almost everywhere. So it's, it's really different from, uh, from Baer. And uh, well, I'd, maybe I won't go too much into, into that. Um, but, but what you can show, at least using this notion of genericity, you can say that if you, if you use um, uh, if you start with almost, in this sense, for almost every function in the space of, of continuous function on the on uh, zero to pi uh, on the circle, then if you randomize, for instance, by uh, by Gaussians, you, you just need technically the fact that it's uh, uh, 
uh, that the, the random variables are, are not, are not uh, bounded, but so Gaussian, uh, again, Gaussian work perfectly well, then its randomized series is almost surely nowhere locally bounded. So, so it, it's not just for, for very strange function, it's, it's, it's a generic result for almost every function in, 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 the, in the function space. Uh, Okay, so let me, let me go back to, uh, to this example. So I'm sure that some of you knew what, what was uh, the Fourier uh, randomization because um, for the SOTUS function, the, the Fourier expansion is just uh, up to a constant w 1 over m. So if you randomize, you get exactly the uh, Wiener's definition of uh, up to linear term, Wiener's definition of the Brown motion. So the first the first uh, stochastic process I showed was actually uh, a Brodon motion. And um, so this is uh, the, same, uh, the same picture. So it's up to linear term, it's, it's a Brodon motion. And uh, what you can show for the indeed, what you can prove indeed for the, uh, for the wavelet randomization is, is actually what, what, what looked like to be true in, in, in the picture, that is for on the smooth part of the, of the SOTUS function, the wavelet randomization is, uh, is a smooth function. I mean, it's as smooth as the wavelet. So if you're using, for instance, C infinity wavelet, you get a C, C infinity function. And the, uh, the, the, the wavelet series is actually divergent at the, uh, at the discontinuity. So it, it, it's, it's not a, um, uh, a kind of Gibbs phenomenon, it's really, it's really worse, I mean, uh, when you pile up uh, uh, terms in the wavelet expansion, things gets, uh, get worse and worse. Okay, so you, um, in the Fourier case, somehow you see that you have a kind of averaging, I mean, the function is, uh, it's a Brunel motion, so it's uh, nowhere smooth, and, and because of the non-localization of the, of the Fourier basis, uh, the, the roughness that, that, that comes from the discontinuities is, is spread, spread a little bit everywhere, but in a not too bad way. I mean, you are essentially everywhere C1 half. And the wavelet, it's just the opposite. It, it, it keeps the, the wavelet randomization exactly, locally keeps the, the regularity and makes it worse uh, in, in the case of discontinuities. Okay, so happy birthday, Stefan. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, uh, questions, comments? Okay, yeah, thanks for the nice talk, Stefan. So, ca can I think about this uh, different quality be different between randomizing Fourier and wavelet yes. uh, sparsity? The fact that if I have functions where most of the wavelet divisions are very small, yeah. then randomization doesn't change too much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah, that's the basic idea. I mean, the, the smooth part is, is really no surprise. What surprised us a little bit more was yeah, the, the divergence at the, at the discontinuities, which actually, for instance, do, does not happen in the, in the case of, uh, of Fourier, where it's just the opposite. I mean, you have a global, uh, global regularity. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it keeps, yeah, it, it keeps the location of the, and you can actually prove a little bit more, like the, the pointwise regularity is uh, preserved everywhere except at, at discontinuities again, where it can uh, just blow up. Are there? Um, so the, the Fourier randomization by, by construction gives you a stationary process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so that there is no surprise on that. Yeah, yeah. And just a, quick, a remark so, uh, about the, your interesting negative result for <laughs> let's have, Remember Alex Grossman used to tell all the time that uh, everything is, is in the phase yes. mm -hmm. of the coefficient. Uh, yes, that the phase plays a critical role in. Uh, I, I don't know how, uh, how these uh, more uh, <laughs> intuitive remarks sort of connect to to this. Maybe there's no connection. Uh, okay, that's, so the, the that's fact that yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, here, I mean, divergence really comes the fact that you. Um, uh, I mean, uh, no, it's not a phase phenomenon. It's just that the, you're randomizing your wavelet coefficients. In the case of the disk, okay, I, I'll give you the, the, just the, the idea of the proof. 
if you have a discontinuity, basically you have wavelet coefficients which are, which are the same, you know, at all scales because of discontinuity. And uh, so you, uh, if you look at what's happening exactly at the discontinuities, you have no decay on the wavelet coefficient. So basically right. convergence is a kind of miracles of, of, of phase that will make the series uh, converge. And if you randomize, essentially you destroy that and you will have, uh, you will have divergence. Mm -hmm. Right. I suggest to move on. Oh, there's another question right there. Well, just on your, um, so what is the growth in the, the local modulus of continuity right around the discontinuities? I suppose uh, it's getting very bad and it must be something. Oh, okay, that, that's a nasty question because <laughs> uh, we just proved, yeah, we, we, we didn't try to get uh, something sharp about that. So, uh, well, I mean, in the case of the Gaussian, it will be like a log-log uh, divergence. I mean, it's it, it just because, uh, as I said to, to Albert, the, the wavelet coefficients, I mean, if you normalize them in the L1 uh, norm, uh, don't decay. So you, 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 you pile up Gaussians, which, uh, and, uh, so that, that just why it diverges. And it, yeah, it will diverge like the, the sum of Gaussians. Great. Right. Thanks, Stefan. Uh, Thank you.